These days, it's common to hear politicians and public commentators lamenting the decline of the traditional family in Western societies, pointing to indicators like divorce rates, children born outside of marriage, mothers of young children working outside the home, and declining fertility rates. Despite this, or perhaps because of it, family life continues to be of significant interest to sociologists. In this lecture, I'll outline why the family is considered by many sociologists to be not just relevant, but pivotal to the study of sociology. First, the family unit is regarded in sociology as a primary foundational social institution in any society and culture. Indeed, for many societies, it's arguably within the framework of family life that most of the development of human sociability takes place. Although some children have been raised in institutions of varying types, for the majority of people, socialization in the formative years of their life has taken place within a family unit of one sort or another. Even institutional arrangements for caring for children have often made some attempt, however inadequate, to reproduce what family life is supposed to be like. Family life is important for sociologists because of its significance in shaping individuals' understandings of their place in society and their relationship to the people around them. Family life also occupies a unique place within society because it's an institution that has a place in both the public and the private spheres. In Western societies where nuclear families are the norm, families are most often conceived of as being relatively insular private entities that should be left to their own devices, except in cases of serious dysfunction such as child abuse. The emphasis on the rights of the individual to maintain their family life according to their own values can mask the fact that families also serve much broader functions within society as a whole. While it's true that aspects of family life can be deeply personal, intimate and private, family structures are also implicated in a diverse range of social questions and problems, such as the gender division of labour, the socialisation of children, ageing populations, superannuation and family violence. For sociologists then, the family remains important because of its broader contribution to the construction and operation of society. Let's take a closer look at the idea of the family unit as a social institution. Social institutions are organised and entrenched systems of social behaviour, so studying the family as an institution means first recognising that families are organised in ways that are developed and established over time within any one society. This doesn't mean that family structures can't change or evolve. You can probably think of several ways that family life has changed, even in the past few decades. However, like any other social institution, familial norms are often experienced as being natural, so that any shift in its institutional structure tends to be gradual. One example of this can be found in the arguments concerning same-sex marriage. Many commentators argue that a marriage should only be between a man and a woman, and they see that as what's natural. For others, all that matters is the quality of the relationship and whether two individuals are committed to supporting each other. Although there are shifting perceptions of the issue across the community, any changes tend to be incremental in nature, precisely because the social attitudes towards marriage as an established social institution are deeply entrenched. The family thus both reflects and contributes to other forms of social change, such as movements for gender inequality or LBGTQI rights, once again highlighting its role in the public sphere as well as in the private realm. Sociologists who study family life may also look at how other institutions affect and are affected by family systems. For instance, how is the family affected by religion and how is religion influenced by the family? Pope Francis' 2016 manifesto on the family, for example, spoke about the challenges faced by families generated by an overly individualistic culture. Many of the issues highlighted by the Pope are also of interest to family sociologists, such as lack of housing and employment, sexual abuse of minors, assisted suicide and violence against women. The Pope's manifesto highlights clear links between family and religion, and it also shows how the family intersects with other social institutions such as work, government and the media. In the approach to family life adopted by functionalist theorists, the family is viewed as one of the building blocks of society. A functionalist perspective will focus on the number and range of social functions that the institution of the family plays in structuring and managing human relationships. These include the protection and socialisation of children, the regulation of sexual activity and the facilitation of procreation and reproduction. The family also functions as a primary source of practical and emotional support and cooperation, providing food, shelter and clothing to other family members, as well as love, comfort and encouragement. 
Talcott Parsons, for example, suggested that a particular function was served by a gender division of practical and emotional support, with men playing an instrumental role as the breadwinners and women playing an expressive role by providing care and nurture. Parsons contended that clear-cut and complementary divisions of labour were highly beneficial in that they allowed for the greatest efficiency and ultimately stability within the family unit. Functionist theories of family life also often stress that the family unit plays a central role in society by providing its members with their social identity. People may experience advantages or barriers in life because of the social identity they acquire from their parents, such as their social class or ethnicity, which is of interest to sociologists who study such forms of identity and difference. Through this process, the family also operates for the transmission of culture across generations as parents pass on customs, traditions and cultural practices through the socialisation of their children. The functionist perspective of the family primarily sees the family as a positive and necessary element of society and places less emphasis on the problems, tensions and conflicts that can occur within family life. To address these problems, we need to look at some other sociological theories of family life, which will be discussed in the next lecture. In summary, the family unit is considered by many sociologists to be one of the primary social institutions of societies around the world, as it's where the development of human sociability takes place. Second, family structures are deeply implicated in a diverse range of social questions and problems and makes a contribution to the broader construction of society. Third, as a long-standing social institution, the norms and values of family life tend to change very gradually in accordance with shifting community attitudes and changing social structures. Fourth, however, family life does still reflect and contribute to social change and intersect with other social institutions. Fifth, functionist approaches to family life view the family as one of the building blocks of society and emphasise the number of social functions that the institution of the family plays in structuring and managing human relationships. Thank you.